Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a very exciting and long awaited video for me. I'm finally going to be doing a review and wear test of the new Tarte Amazonian Amazon Amazonian Clay Stick Foundation. I'm super super excited. I got this the day that it released moment that it was released I was super super excited it took a couple weeks to get here um, you know just through shipping and whatnot because I live in Louisiana things take forever to get to where I live let's be honest nothing ever ships fast to me even Amazon Prime things sometimes take an extra day just because of where I live in the remote area that I live in which kind of sucks but anyways um so I finally got this and I've just been so busy. I haven't been able to sit down and have a day where I can actually show you guys how long it is, like the long lasting kind of product that it is. So I have finally been able to sit down and do it. I'm not gonna lie, this isn't a first impression because I have tried it out once before. So I have like that first impression kind of in my mind I have my thoughts compiled things like that so I just wanted to do like a full review the things that I noticed didn't notice things like that to you guys and then take you throughout the day so you can see how long it lasts I do feel a little congested today so I'm sorry if you like think I've sound a little bit nasally and I'm really sorry about my nail polish too because I haven't had time to sit down and repaint my nail without further ado let's get into it Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the foundation before we jump into things. So this is what it says at Tarte.com. Right now it retails for $39 and it's only available on Tarte.com. Um, they have 12 shades. Their shade range isn't atrocious for only having 12 shades. Like they do have a really, really fair shade for those who are extremely pale. Um, and then they do have a really, like two really deep chocolatey shades one's a little bit more warm one's a little bit more cool tone so they do cover a few different undertones as well as from the very light to the very deep um 12 shades isn't very good for a high-end foundation to be honest they definitely need more shades and i think that's kind of the issue that a lot of people are having with this is that their shade range isn't very good but i know a lot of cosmetic companies will release um, like a small selection of shades to see how the foundation is see if the um, consumers really enjoy the product and then if they do they gets a lot of hype their sales are really good they see a lot of positive reviews on social media things like that then they will release more shades in the future which I think is kind of what Tarte is trying to do it may be a really pricey product to manufacture so they didn't want to jump the gun and let you know 40 shades out right now and then find that people just don't really like it because that would end up being a waste of money um kind of from the business side of it but anyway so the description is have you fed your skin lately our 12 hour creamy matte clay stick feeds your appetite for weightless natural coverage and good for you nutrients um amazonian clay has the nature's most perfect ingredient um, mineral pigments so it smooths and softens the skin vitamin C so that's an antioxidant um, that helps brighten the skin vitamin E that's a natural preservative and also acts as an emollient so it's supposed to be like a really really emollient foundation apply to the skin really well it's supposed to be matte um, it has a 12 hour wear time let's see it's a buildable powder to liquid formula, which is very interesting, powder to liquid. Usually it's the other way, it's like a liquid to powder, so that's very interesting for this thing. Um, so it's a powder to liquid formula that melts into your skin for medium to full coverage, leaving a natural finish that looks and feels just like your own skin. Micro-encapsulated powders that then burst with your body heat to keep your shine and cake free. Um, the vegan formula features an antioxidant Vitamin C and E in Amazonian clay, a total skin balance powerhouse that hydrates or mattifies depending on your skin type. Uh, the the guilt-free blend also means that there are no harsh chemicals like talc, gluten, sulfates, or parabens in your buildable creamy coverage. Use on the go as a spot concealer or a lighter or darker shades to highlight and contour. Just swipe, blend, and slay with clay. Um... So it's very interesting. I will say, like, um, so this is, like, the creamy matte clay stick feeds your appetite. You know, it says there that it's going to be clay, but further on down in the more descriptive 
um, kind of directions. It does say that it's a natural finish, so they kind of counteract themselves in the description. I will say that about Tarte. I mean, that's kind of embarrassing to do that to yourselves, but whatever. So basically what it says is it has a 12 hour foundation, 12 hour foundation. It's a 12 hour wear. It's going to either mattify or hydrate depending on your skin type. I have very oily skin, so for me, I'm looking for it to mattify. I have seen people who have drier skin use it, and it will be a little bit more hydrating. So if you have dry skin, I think it is something that you can use. If you have oily skin, I think it's something you can use. So that's very um, unique for your foundation to work for all skin types. Um, so it's supposed to be cake-free, shine-free. Um, medium to full coverage and buildable so that is just kind of the gist of it so I went ahead and primed my face I always use primers the first time I did test this out though without using a primer and I didn't feel that it emphasized any of my pores my texture things just weren't quite as smooth as when I use a primer um, today I used the soap and glory one heck of a blot as well as the elf mineral primer so that kind of gives you an idea of what I used. Um, on social media, they have been saying that you should use a brush. So I'm going to be using my e.l.f. Um, Ultimate Blending Brush on one side of my face. And for you beauty blender lovers or sponge lovers, I'm going to be using the L'Oreal Blending Sponge on this side of my face. Typically, I go for the blending sponge like 99% of the time. I do feel, however, that I do like using a brush with this. I'm still going to test it out so you guys can kind of see the difference. If you are one person who, you know, leans towards one or the other, um, I'll show you kind of the difference. So here is what the packaging looks like. By the way, I'm in the shade Light Beige, um, and I'll explain why I got this shade. Uh, this one is just a nice neutrally undertone. It's just a perfect stick like that. The packaging is gorgeous. The twist is perfect. Um, you do get... 0.32 ounces in here which isn't fabulous but it is on trend with how many ounces you typically get in a stick foundation so go ahead and apply it I'm gonna zoom you guys in just a little bit so you guys are in a little bit closer so you can kind of see the application so I'm just gonna go like one two put a couple on the forehead one down the nose. Okay, I'm going to go with like a little three. Okay, so that's how much I do. And I don't know if you can see, but the color is already oxidizing on my skin compared to what it is in the tube. It's already oxidizing. So that's other another downside is the Amazonian clay in this. And most of the Amazonian clay products have the tendency to oxidize. And I see it with a lot of different skin types. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with this sponge and start blending. But you can see, like, it's already blended in on my chin. So it blends very, very easy, easily, very seamlessly. So that is a huge plus. So it meets the claim on that. It's a very nice, creamy, very smooth. It doesn't tug at the skin as you apply it. It blends in effortlessly. The only downside is that it does oxidize. Um, so I have tested out their Amazonian Clay, their full coverage, conceal full coverage foundation, the one that comes in that purple tube. Um, and it has the tendency to oxidize. So if you are going to be purchasing this product, you definitely need to go up a shade. Um, or if you can't find your perfect shade, buy two and mix them um, in order to avoid the foundation not really matching. Um, I did go up a shade than what I, like one up from what I thought I would need because I do stay self-tanned on a consistent basis and I stay the same color with the product that I've been using lately. Um, and this one is still just a little too light. The undertone is perfect, but overall it's still just a little too light for my skin. I can definitely make it work with like bronzer and things like that, but just keep it in mind. You'll have to go up a shade. If you can't, you know, like me, the shade that I thought I would work is going to be too dark once it oxidizes. Um, and this one is still a little too light once it oxidizes, so I would really need to mix the two. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so that is what one layer looks like with the sponge. 
you can definitely still see I have a little bit of pigmentation right here. Um, I have some acne spots right here that I didn't completely cover, but it did a really great job for me. I think that is a nice medium coverage foundation. So I am going to go ahead and apply it on this side. So like I said, I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. And now the brush is what they suggest, and I usually hate blending in foundations with a brush. I tend to find that it gets brush strokes. Um, I just don't feel like it sinks into the skin very well in comparison, but this foundation definitely does sink into the skin very well, and you obviously get more of a full coverage look using the brush than you do a beauty sponge. That is just the tendency a sponge will um, soak up more of the product, and it will kind of sheer it out because you're using like a wet or a damp sponge. It just has a tendency to sheer out foundations. Typically, I just really like things looking that way, more of a natural look. And I rather kind of just build it up versus going in with a heavy foundation brush. But this one I do prefer with the brush. Alright, so this is what this side looks like. I do have an acne spot right here that it did not completely cover up, but it definitely looks more of like a medium to full coverage, whereas this side is just a good medium coverage. So you can definitely see the difference. And now for me, I would definitely just call this great. I would just add some concealer, like spot conceal with it. Uh, but for the sake of the video, I'll go ahead and build it up so you guys can see kind of what the buildable pigment looks like. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go like one right there. Mostly on this side is where I need to build it up, honestly. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off with the brush. That was just kind of showing you, you definitely do get a natural finish on both sides. Sometimes using a beauty sponge, like a damp sponge like this, can also give you a different finish. A matte finish is actually going to be more like a natural finish, just because of the moisture in the sponge. But this one seems to be uniform all around. So I'm just going to go ahead and blend it in. Alright, so that is what it looks like blended in. It blends in seamlessly. Like this foundation blends so well it is so nice it's smooth and it does dry down it doesn't have any tackiness to it it doesn't have any sticky feel to it so if you have dry skin i think you can get away without setting this maybe if you have the tendency for things to kind of crease around your nose or slip and slide based on what primer you use you can definitely just set those specific targeted areas you don't have to set your full face for me i have oily skin so whether a foundation dries down completely or not i have to set it otherwise it will not last and it'll slip and slide throughout the day so it really just kind of depends on what type of skin you have for that factor but it builds up very very nice it's still very lightweight i do feel like i have foundation on my face but it's not like a heavy foundation feel. I'm also gonna go ahead and show you what cream contouring looks like. So if you are somebody who really loves to cream contour um, or put cream highlights on, if you are huge into that, then you know that a lot of foundations will lift as you are trying to blend in your cream products on top. So I'm gonna go in with the Wet n Wild, the Mega Glow contouring stick in the shade Where's Walnut. And then I'm just going to go in with that same Ultimate Blending Brush and go ahead and blend it in. Alright, so that's what the cream contour looks like. After cream contouring, you can tell that like the foundation matches my body a lot more. So that's why I feel like I can make this foundation shade work when I have like my natural kind of self-tan look going on. But this is what it looks like. I think it blends in seamlessly. It still keeps that nice kind of matte finish. So again, if you have dry skin and you like to cream contour, put your cream products over top, and you find that you don't have to set them because they set down completely, this is a great foundation because it doesn't lift. Like none of the coverage is gone. It blends in seamlessly. It reacts wonderfully with any product. So I've used the Tarte Shape Tape. I've used the Maybelline. Um, better Skin Concealer with it. I've used the NYX HD Concealer with it. 
So that's kind of like three different types of concealers and they work wonderfully. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up my makeup and I will be right back. All right, so now everything is on. Everything applied beautifully and I, you can still see a tiny bit of a sheen. Nothing too major though. I did set my face using the, um, the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Pressed Powder. So it still has a little bit of a sheen because of that, but that's what I like. So we will see how it wears throughout the day. I have to be outside moving furniture today and it's hot and humid in Louisiana. So um, we'll definitely get a great test going on today. Um, right now it is 12.53, so I will check in with you guys later. Okay, so it definitely wore down a lot more today than it has in the past, the last time that I tried it. Um, but I'm gonna be honest, like I was not kind to my face today. Like I said, I was gonna be outside. We moved furniture um, outside in the heat and humidity of Louisiana in the middle of the afternoon, so... I was sweating, I was rubbing my face on things, I was touching my face, but overall, like, I didn't blot it all today, and I will say, I look more shiny on camera than I do in person because of the strong light that I have coming straight on my face, um, and if you look closely, you can really tell that the makeup has worn off, and that's just because... You know, I was out in the heat and humidity moving furniture and then also I've been laying in bed all afternoon and I was wrestling with my dog, I've been laying on the pillow, I took a really long nap, things like that. So um, down here, that's what it is. It's just rubbed completely off from wrestling with the dog, laying on the pillow, things like that. So it's not completely... I don't want to say it's not transfer proof because it is, especially once I set it, but with strong, like if you sit there and rub at your face, it's going to rub away, if that makes sense. It's not going to stay if you are a face toucher, if you have the tendency to really touch your face. Now up here on my forehead, it really hasn't looked like it's worn off at all because that's the area that I haven't been touching. This is the area that doesn't get you know, rubbed on the dog's back as we're wrestling, it doesn't spend as much time on the pillow, things like that. So up here, it looks just like it's worn down a little bit. It's separated a little bit up here on my forehead, and it is a tiny, tiny bit shiny, but nothing too major. So overall, like, I think this is a true long-wearing foundation. It is very hydrating on the skin. Um, for me, it's hydrating, but it also keeps me matte. Like, I haven't had to blot at all today, and normally I would have to blot two or three times in a day. So I'm extremely impressed. The contour and the bronzer that I did put up here on my forehead hasn't faded throughout the day, so... Overall, I would probably give this like an 8 out of 10 for a great foundation, a long wearing foundation. It's very comfortable with a really great coverage. The only downsides, like I told you guys earlier, is that um, it doesn't have a very great shade range. You know, Tarte really needs to release more shades of this. And you just don't get as much bang for your buck, you know. So I get that it has a lot of really great skincare benefits, which is why it is $40. Um, for a stick foundation, usually a stick foundation should be a little bit less than like their average foundation, which also retails for $39. So, um, that's also kind of a downside for me, but other than that, I do really love it. Oh, and the oxidation, that's a downside for me, is the oxidation. It oxidizes so quickly on my skin, I hate it. But other than that, like those, that's kind of why I knocked off those extra points. I don't honestly almost give it more like a 7 out of 10 like knocking off those three points because those are three pretty high points for a lot of people they hate oxidation they hate the price tag and they hate how much um you know how few shades come in a line if it's not going to suit everybody's skin tone they don't want to spend 80 dollars just to have one foundation that works for them you know you have to buy two different shades which is 80 dollars and then yeah it'll last a little bit longer because you're using two different products but still you don't want to front that type of money does that make sense so yeah, I would recommend it. I really would if you can find a rain a shade that works for you. I did see on Instagram today that they are going to be carrying it at Sephora. So you can go into your local Sephora, swatch them a few times, see which shade will work out for you, see what oxidizes, what doesn't oxidize for you. That way you're not playing the guessing game trying to buy it online at Tarte.com. But alright guys, so that is everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it and I will see you guys later. Bye!